Hello, garden lovers. Wow, what an incredible spring we have had this year in Southern California. Here are some harvest videos from May. We have been harvesting chili peppers that grew in our greenhouse over the winter, some cucumbers that were grown in the greenhouse, and lots of heads of lettuce. We'll add the full length harvest videos at the end of this video. We harvested lots of onions, beautiful, and lots and lots of artichokes. This is the purple globe, and here is the green globe. This one is red star. More purple globes. And after trying the various varieties, Purple Globe is definitely my favorite. It keeps longer than the rest of the varieties after it's been harvested. And the strawberries have been incredible this year. Hit the subscribe button and bell to be notified to not miss anything and follow us on Instagram. All right, now on to what we are planting, sowing and growing in June, plus a potential problem when growing chili peppers that is often overlooked. You could see here we cleared out a lot of our nasturtium to make room to direct sow some Asian greens. My absolute favorite is Purple Lady and Love Violetta. We are also growing Red Cloud, Red Kingdom, and Ruby Red Orange. It is risky direct sowing due to all of our pill bug activity but these beds are pretty much under control. Haven't seen a lot of pill bug activity. And this month, our tomato plants are going wild. I get so greedy and keep the suckers, but at some point, I'm not gonna be able to tie them all up, so I'll definitely be cutting some out. June is all about tomato plant care and maintenance to make sure that they stay healthy so we're feeding them compost tea, tying up the plants, shaking them to encourage pollination, and we'll periodically be making some trips out when it's dark to search for tomato hornworms with the black light. It was fascinating. I was watching an episode of Survivor and I was shocked at this clip. I had no idea praying mantis would eat grasshoppers. That made me so happy because we have so many prey mantis around here. Little babies hatching all over the place. Let's go in for a quick close-up of the tomato plants. This was filmed a couple weeks ago because it takes me quite a bit of time to get around to editing. I believe this clip was filmed June 3rd and you ought to see them now. They are so beautiful. June is also all about caring for our chili pepper plants. Here we are topping our chili pepper plants with compost, and as they get watered, the compost mulch will feed the soil. You can also give them a compost tea water. We did that when they were a little younger, and we also like to use a fish fertilizer. Chili pepper plants are heavy feeders, so it's very important that they get the nutrients that are required for strong, healthy plants and big harvests. We also go around pinching flowers off of plants where we want large chili peppers, like bell peppers, of course our green chilies, and poblanos. This clip was also filmed on June 3rd, so it's a couple weeks old. Here are the green chili plants today, two weeks later. Quite a bit bigger. They're really bulking out. We don't remove blossoms from smaller chili peppers like jalapenos and habaneros. We have this beautiful, prolific jalapeno plant, lots of chilies setting in. But we do have two jalapeno plants set aside where we are going to thin the blossoms so that we could get the largest jalapenos possible for stuffed jalapenos. Chef John, AKA Warrior Husband, has an amazing stuffed jalapeno recipe that we'll be sharing down the road. And now that the chili pepper plants are maturing, 
They're gonna start setting in fruit soon and going to get very heavy. So we use these very sturdy bamboo stakes. We have found other bamboo stakes were pretty flimsy. These are nice and strong. All right, and at the beginning of the video, I mentioned a problem that can occur growing chili peppers, but often gets overlooked. These are two overwintered chili peppers. They got pruned back dramatically. You can see here we got a little bit of growth and some blossoms setting in, but this plant has been struggling compared to the one on the left. The Sereno plant is bouncing back after its trim. It's doing excellent. This other plant is a jalapeno plant and it was struggling in a couple ways. First, you saw the yellowing of the leaves. It was needing nutrients desperately. So we got it topped with some compost, but before we topped it, you could see the roots here. The roots were exposed. So it was struggling by lack of nutrients and with the roots being exposed. We're gonna go ahead and top this pepper plant with a couple of inches of compost. Plus, we'll get it a compost tea water. We've identified this problem a few times now with the roots being exposed, tied to the pepper plant struggling. Sometimes when watering with a watering can, the water can wash away the topsoil. So getting it mulched with compost solves the issue. Plus, pepper plants are like tomato plants. They have adventitious roots. So adding soil on top of the pepper plant next to the stem is no problem. And this month we are also succession planting watermelon plants. We have several watermelon plants at different stages in their growth. We recently direct sowed the sugar baby bush. I have to quickly feature this Chandler strawberry. Beautiful. And we are transplanting a few more watermelon plants. This is a mini watermelon from Baker Creek. This will allow us to spread out our watermelon harvest throughout the summer. And just a quick watermelon plant tip, they hate their roots being disturbed. So in a case like this, where we sowed some seeds in these cells as a backup, we make sure to transplant before the roots get too overgrown. I just love when the seed stays on the sprout. So if you're picking up some watermelon starts from a local nursery, try to get the youngest plants possible. And this month we are starting more pumpkins. We showed this volunteer pumpkin plant in our May video. Here it is now, it's growing like a weed. We have this guy growing. I believe it's going to end up being the variety Grizzly. We will see soon. And we did have a pollination issue, so we went ahead and hand pollinated. Here is a quick clip. You could see there the little baby pumpkin that's yellowing. That means it was not pollinated. And here is a female flower you got the pumpkin on the back, so that's how you can identify. The male flowers do not have the pumpkin starting on the back. We just pick a male flower and rub the pollen on the female flower, and there you have it, you get a pumpkin. Here are the varieties we are growing this year. We have Shiver, Igor, and Jack B. Little. Jack B. Little is a super cute, small pumpkin, maybe the size of a golf ball. And then the volunteer, I believe, is going to be Grizzly. We got the seeds sowed on 6-3, so June 3rd, just a couple weeks ago. And look at this, we got to thin them out, but I love how fast pumpkins grow. So fun. And the bees haven't been moving through this part of the garden, so it looks like we'll be hand pollinating to make sure we have a couple of pumpkins growing per vine. This month we are planting some kohlrabi. We should have planted it sooner, but we keep running out of time. But love these little vegetable apples. Here is a variety by Baker Creek. We will succession plant. They grow so fast. So in a couple more weeks, we'll go ahead and sow some more. 
We are also succession planting cucumbers. You saw our harvest video with our cucumbers in the greenhouse. We've got some varieties growing outside. It's gonna be too hot in the greenhouse to grow cucumbers. There's one of our favorite, Bait Alpha, and Unagi is great as well. Here are the varieties we'll be succession planting over the next couple months. And I don't have Tanya here, but we will also be adding Tanya. And of course, pest management. Aphids are a year round battle. This is my favorite chili pepper. It's a chocolate habanero. It's in the greenhouse and the aphids are starting to infest it. So I'm gonna get them a spray of insecticidal soap and it'll do the trick. We just fill up the sprayer with water, squirt in some sal suds, the Dr. Bronner soap, shake it up real good and spray all under the leaves and on top of the leaves, especially where the new leaves are coming out. That seems to be their favorite spot where they get in there and start multiplying. So if left in there for over a week, they could really do some damage to the new baby leaves coming out. So we suds them all down. We really get them soaked. We make sure to do it when the sun is not up yet or when the sun has gone down. Let the soap sit for about 30 minutes. Then we'll come in with the mister mist off all the soap from the tops of the leaves. And this month we are relocating lots of volunteer tomato plants. Here is a volunteer chili pepper plant. This was the Aji Rico growing here last year and it's Jet's favorite chili pepper. And like I mentioned earlier about the suckers on the tomato plants, I'm so greedy. I just want them all. <laughs> so I can't just pick out these little pepper plants and throw them out. I'm taking time to transplant them. It's free chili pepper plants. This month we added another berry bush. Very excited about this one. This is a black raspberry. We got this one from fastgrowingtrees.com. They're an excellent company. At the end, we have some more harvest video clips. You'll see we have some blackberries that are doing outstanding and they are so delicious. And of course, we are succession planting more lettuce, but what's different is we are making sure to sow seeds of heat tolerant varieties. And here are some great ones. We have Gold Star, Green Star, Little Gem, it's a little baby romaine, Red Cross, Marvel of Four Seasons is excellent, New Red Fire. Out of all of them though, Sierra just performs the best in Southern California in all seasons. And I just love this one. Look at this beautiful, beautiful variety from Baker Creek. Here it says slow to bolt which is definitely what we need in Southern California. And since the high temperatures are right around the corner, next week we're seeing around 89-ish. And in a couple weeks uh, is July. So the upper 90s will be here soon. So we are planning our defense from the UV rays now to make sure that our tomato plants don't get too stressed out and drop their blossoms. We are test fitting shade cloths to make sure that we are not scrambling at the last minute when the high temperatures are here. We place these heavy duty bamboo stakes to protect the runner beans. Got some beans coming in. So we don't want the shade cloth pushing on those and potentially damaging the blossoms. We place the bamboo stakes at three points in the four by eight bed. You saw at the beginning of the clip that we're using a 40% and I would have preferred a tan color, but this will work. What's most important is the protection. This is one of my all time favorite tomato varieties, Gin Fizz. So we definitely want to get as many as possible when the high temps come in. So we got to get them protected so that we can continue to get fruit setting in even in the 
high heat in July. This spring's weather has been incredible. Feels like normally we have two weeks of spring and then it's straight to summer. And so far, all tomato plants are doing excellent except for this brandy wine. You can see it's got a major problem. As the plants get older, the bottom leaves will start to yellow. That's normal, but what we just saw with the brandy wine, the whole entire plant seems to be infected with some type of disease. Not sure what's going on. Here is a shot of our sun golds. So this is normal yellowing activity for a plant, a tomato plant that's getting older. So we'll have to get that brandy wine removed, unfortunately, and we'll go ahead and start removing some of these older leaves. These two clips are a gardener's best friend. There are so many different uses for them, but they especially work great when securing down shade cloths. All right, that's it for now. Up next are some more harvest clips. And for more videos on how to grow food in a hot deserty climate, hit the subscribe button. And remember, something doesn't come from nothing. I hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden.